Hello my dear friends and viewers, I hope you're having a lovely day. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel, Ataslima Maya Art. If you enjoy the content on my channel, please do consider leaving a like, share and subscribe. And do leave me a comment, I love hearing from you. And a warm welcome back to you for this week's Fluid Art Express. Up after me, we have a wonderful guest artist called Michael's Making Art. So please do make sure you go on to his channel and give him some love. I will put the playlist of all the artists down in my description box below. Today, I'll be doing my first ever straight cloud pour that was actually successful. But before we get started, I'd like to give a big shout out to all my amazing channel members. Thank you so much for your support. And a special shout out for Dave and Kathy from the Travelling Tramps. Please go check out their channel if you haven't already. Hello everyone and welcome. I hope you're doing well today. Um, I'm going to be doing my second ever attempt at a cloud pour today and um, we shall see how it goes. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen. I have mixed up my paints according to a recipe that I was given so I will see what happens with this one. The last one was not really... Uh, successful. So what I have here is a taped up, masked up um, on the back, um, 20 by 20 centimeter canvas on my turntable, my Lazy Susan. I've checked that it's level and it is. And we just got that out of the way. What I have is an empty glass and my colours. Now I'm going to go through my colours for you. Okay. So to begin with, I have this colour and you can see the consistency is relatively thick. Okay, so it leaves a couple of second trace before it disappears. And that colour is this one. This is Amsterdam Permanent Blue Violet. Okay, it's a transparent colour. The next one we have is this one. Beautiful turquoise colour. Okay, and that one is actually a combination of two colours that I have here. And they are an opaque Pepio turquoise blue and a diner iridescent green blue. We'll put that down. The next colour I have, I'll show you this one, is this beautiful Amsterdam, you've guessed it, phthalo blue. Again, really lovely. They're all similar consistency. I haven't done a consistency check because I don't think I really need to. I can simply eyeball it. That's the phthalo blue from Amsterdam. Um, again, that's another transparent colour. And then what we have is this one, Beautiful, gorgeous red, my favourite colour. Slightly on the thicker side. Yep, I might just spray some water into that one. Just stir that up a little bit more. I do want it to be able to be tiltable on the canvas. Slightly better now. Okay, and that one is actually Amsterdam Natural Red Medium. Okay, semi-transparent. And then the last two are this one, this gorgeous yellow, again a bit thick. I think they've been sat there thickening up for me. I've simply mixed them up not long ago to those, so there are some air bubbles in here unfortunately, but I do need to get pouring today. I've got so many other things um, on my schedule today, I just need to get this one done. There we go, hopefully you can see that. Um, and that colour is actually Amsterdam as Zoyala Medium, okay? Um, and then what we have is my Satin Enamel mix. This is my cloud mix that I need to maybe hopefully create those puffy clouds that you see on so many people's wonderful cloud pores. I'm going to add a bit more water to that because it does seem like it's thickened up a bit. And I'm going to mix that up. And my cloud pour is actually a combination of um, Arteza Pale White, this one which is a mica colour and um, satin enamel from Deco Art, one part of each, and then two parts of um, Floatrol, and I'm using, because I'm in the UK, I'm using a weight troll, okay, it's slightly thicker than American Floatrol, but um, it's pretty good, and um, I'm going to be using this for the first time in this particular recipe. So, um, the other colour I haven't mentioned yet is this one, and this, I'm not entirely sure if I mixed this up correctly, but I, this is actually, I mean, it looks grey, but it's actually this, this little piggy, stuck up pigs, pretentious, okay? So I pop that in, into a mixture of gel gloss medium, which is this one, extra heavy golden gel gloss, um, one part of that to one part of my Floatrol, stirred that up, added the piggy, 
powder, the pigment powder, pretentious, mix that up, thinned it down, then I added more floral at the end then to thin, thin it up uh, to the same consistency as the rest of my colours. So we're ready now. So I'm going to start layering my cup and I might speed this part up just for convenience's sake. Um, so let's do that. So I'm going to start layering up. Right, so I want to give a few shout outs. The first one is um, to Garrick Brown. Eric Brown Art Studios and I got this colour palette actually from one of his videos where he did amazing sunset straight pour so please do go check out his channel and give him a subscribe if you don't know him already he's amazing um, his work is amazing and just just go and look and have a look at what he's doing it's great the other person I want to give a shout out to is Sheldon Briscoe or Shell Rock Art who gave me some tips about how to actually get a good recipe that works for me being in the UK slightly different obviously with the things that I have um, particularly the weight all being different but um let's hope this works because i haven't actually practiced it so i'm going to start with layering my cup okay i'll move this off actually and put it down there and i'm going to start with my mixture so let's pop that in Okay, I think that's enough. There we go. Pop that back down. Now, I've put my cloud mix in first because I want that to be the last that comes out of this um, cup, so it goes right in the center of my pour. I'm gonna put some of this yellow in, this Azo Yellow Medium from Amsterdam. I'm gonna keep that spoon out. So let's do that. I'm trying to guess how much to put in really. I really want that to be visible. There we go. And then I'm going to go for my beautiful natural red medium. Let's pour that in. Next up, it's my phalo blue, beautiful rich blue colour, right next to the red. Here we go. And then after that, I'm going to try my SUP, my stuck up piggy, pretentious, slightly thick this, but it should be okay. I'm not sure what effect this is going to have, but it's a colour shifting pigment slightly thicker than the others. I'm not going to put too much of this in. I think that's enough. I'm looking forward to using this one for nearly a year and I haven't had a chance really to um, put it into one of my pores. So we'll see. And then we've got the beautiful opaque turquoise blue from Pebio. Let's pop that next to Pretentious. And this is, obviously it's opaque, so... Here we go. Beautiful opaque, and then we've got this gorgeous permanent blue violet, and that's going in last. And I'm going to put a fair bit of that one in. Here we go. All right, we're ready to pour. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting down a small puddle in the center. And I'll keep some back for later. There we go. And I'll spread some of this out. Just for the paint to glide over and not lose too much of its design. There we go. Done that. I'll pop that there. And then I'll put a bit more in the centre. Okay, I think that's okay. And we're ready to pour. Okay, so wish me luck. I'm going to start pouring out from this end. Now you can see the SUP coming out. Here 
the blue is taking over a fair bit, isn't it? Maybe I needed a little bit less of the blue, but we'll see what happens. You can see the cloud mix coming out now when I'm trying to wiggle my hand back and forth and get it all to come out of that cup in a nice pattern. I managed to keep it mostly essential, which is actually amazing for a proper visco. I don't see much red, mind, but I think the blue did bully itself over the other colours a fair bit. So I'm going to try and get ready now to take my cup away. A little bit nervous about doing that bit, but as soon as the colours stop, I think as soon as the colours stop trickling out and the paint stops, I'll be able to take my cup away without hopefully making too much of a boo boo. Wow, I seem to have lost quite a lot of my colours. Whoa, that just kind of did it by itself. It just stopped by itself, which was amazing. So that's what it's currently looking like. And um, I'm going to keep it a second. I'll bring it up closer so you can see it. Oops, I'm hitting something there. So you can see some really little red and greens in the blue there. I can't see much of that purple violet. But um, in the middle, that's where I'm hoping I'm going to get fingerlings in this first try. So we're going to give it a second now to develop before I start tilting it in any direction. So I'll wait a second. So I'll just show you what I mean by the little puffy clouds there. You can see that the satin enamel cloud mix is puffing up. It's really pretty. I'm hoping when I tilt this out, it will actually get bigger. So I might do that in a minute, but I'll just put some paint around the edges. pop some paint around the edge now to help it float better and not tilt over itself and roll over itself. Let's do that now. I can be quite a clutch sometimes, quite clumsy, so I'm worried I'm going to drop this right in the middle, which is quite possible. <laughs> ah, I did a little bit too much in there, whoops. Um, yeah, I think it just needs more around the corners there. I've got to be very careful now. And I'd love to torch this, but I think torching will just cause more white spots from the fact that I did. I only just mixed my paint up, so there's some bubbles in there, definitely. There we go. I'll pop that down a minute. I'll just use my palette knife to make sure. I will make you wait. I'll just pause this. Right, I'm ready to tilt it out. And I'm going to start tilting. <laughs> I watched all of um, Garrett Brown's advice on um, how best to tilt these out without losing too much. So before I start, I might move this to the table so I don't get it covered in paint. So we're going to start tilting it out. I'll go to kind of the corner and knock it back a bit. And back in the centre there. Wow, look at that. It's amazing. And then he said to go in a circular manner. It's actually quite pretty, isn't it? Unusual. Just need to go left and right. I'll just pop this off. Right. Now I'm gonna tilt it back that way tilt it right off. No, actually, we've got essential, so what shall I do? Okay, so <laughs> maybe I'll just make it more circular by tilting it out almost to the corners. 
but not quite and then tilt it back again wow look at those wow <laughs> i'm impressed so i'm gonna try and take this end down a bit so i might what should i do i might actually take it off the edge this time and just bring it back quickly slowly 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 come on over the edge over the corner yep almost done and then bring it back well i probably shouldn't have gone so far but look at those rainbow lines wow oops rainbow lines are amazing i'm gonna tilt it back down this side to try and get the composition in the center Um, it's quite hard to hold this actually. Maybe if I hold it like this. So I hope you can see that. Now I'm going to tilt it right off this corner. Come on, you can do it. Done it. Okay. And then let's tilt it back. There was quite a lot of white. I think my lesson learned for this time is use less of the first layer I put in of that um, satin enamel cloud mix. But wow, look at this weird effect. Isn't it crazy? Look at that corner. I'm gonna take it off this end now. Try not to distort this middle too much. I always have a feeling I'm gonna drop the entire canvas while I'm doing this stuff. Go, cool. okay, it's over the corner. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Can you see this edge? It's amazing. Right, okay, I've got to concentrate. What am I doing? So, let's maybe touch up the corner there. A bit, help it more go along a bit more. Now I'm going to try and push it this way. So let's do that. This is cool. I want to try this again already, but I think what I might do next time is put less of the white in. So we're just going to try and get the paint to go that way. It's good, it's not moving too fast because it just means that I haven't got way too much paint, you know, on my canvas. Right, and then we've done that bit. There. Okay, so this is, oh, what am I doing? This is what it currently looks like. Isn't that amazing? I don't really want to move it back to the center because I quite like all of these beautiful edges, you know? That's just like, whoa, rainbow edges. Um, I like it how it is. You know, I did take it off too much on this end, I think. But I think that's like, wow, it's amazing. Um, I think I'm going to leave it like this. I quite like this as it is. So I'll just show you what that looks like. I'm just get all this paint off me. So that's what it's currently looking like. And I will get you a really nice close up. Look at that. Blooming heck. It's just crazy, but way too much white, definitely. But the edges are beautiful. Oh, wow. Look at that. The lighting's not amazing in here, but if you could see it like how you see it, you'd realise, like, this is just wow. That, so that's it from me today. I'm going to do a few close-ups for you in a minute. And um, thank you for joining me on my little um, expedition with this cloud pour. And I'll um, see you next week. Up after me is the wonderful Michael's Making Arts. This week is our guest artist, so please stay on the train for the Food Art Express, and I'll see you over on his live. But make sure you stay around just to have a look at the close-ups and the flyover on this beautiful straight cloud pour with the rainbow edges. Wow, so look at this second ever attempt at a cloud pour I've done. Look at those lines, greens, blues, reds, and you see the little beautiful pockets of pearls, clouds coming up. Look at the beautiful lines. It's unbelievable. Wow. I'm <laughs> just in awe of this technique. And um, again, a big thank you to all of those amazing artists who've given me some tips about how to do this and advice and I really appreciate it. Look what you helped me create on my second ever try. An actual try. This is my actual try. The last one was me just messing about without the right recipe. Um, the only thing I'm not particularly fond of is the middle. I don't know what you guys think of the middle. It's a bit crazy looking, isn't it? It's a bit bolder like and um, you've got these huge kind of fingerlings or 
huge puffiness. It does look like a puffy cloud. It's crazy, but I'm in love with this side. This is just beautiful. I'm just in shock. It's gone right off the edge as well. It's just unbelievable, those colours. And I'm so going to try this again without all of that um, cloud pour that I poured in at the beginning of this cup. But honest to God, if you could see this in person, it's even more beautiful than on camera. I can't quite capture it on camera, but oh, wow, um, I'm still going to pour another one. <laughs> I've got some paints left and I really want to have another go without um, the, so much of the cloud mixture in it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, I'm just so pleased with this one. It's a nice um, upbeat ending to last week when I wasn't very pleased with my last one. But yeah, it's just gorgeous. And I know what you're thinking. You're looking at this and thinking the same thing I thought when I was looking at other people's cloud pores, thinking I could never, ever achieve that, you know, this look. But in all honesty, if I, as a beginner, after three attempts, can do this, you can too. You really, really can. Um, I used a much more simplified recipe than anyone else that I've seen, really. Um, all I used was satin enamel with my Arteza white paint and some Floetrol. Nothing more. Just look at the astonishing effect on this. And the bolder centre with those puffy clouds. I think my favourite part of this pour is those styrations around the edges, those beautiful kind of layers and layers and lines upon lines of multicoloured rainbow colours. And some of those gorgeous cells that you can see have popped up as well, those little tiny round clouds. It's just a gorgeous piece. I love it. And I'm going to definitely try this technique again with less um, cloud mix um, at the bottom of my cup. So I've learned quite a lot about this technique by doing this one and I've learned that actually if I avoid putting my cloud mix in first I'll get some different effects um, and I'll be able to sandwich um, that cloud mix between my colours to create a different effect entirely. So that's the next goal. Thank you for watching me. Love you. Thanks all of you for the support and love you give me. I always appreciate every single one of you and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.